What's up, board game people? I've never met a pirate game that didn't draw my eye, so today we're going to take a quick look at the latest Kickstarter campaign for Dead Reckoning's new expansion, Letters of Mark. So set a course, trim the sails, and break out the rum, because we're sailing the high seas in search of treasure and adventure. Before we weigh anchor, please know that I do not receive any money from game companies for my videos. I make them to help gamers like you and me find new and exciting games in a sea of duds and bores. If I get anything wrong, or we disagree about something, let's parlay in the comments. Dead Reckoning, the core game, was launched and funded back in July of 2020, bringing in just under a million dollars, and has been critically pretty well received. In Dead Reckoning, you and up to three of your nearest and dearest pirate foes will set sail, explore open waters, islands, and ports of call, gain influence, trade, hunt treasure, battle, and of course pirate your way to fame and fortune. The game includes an inventive card crafting component where you're able to upgrade the crew of your ship by slipping semi-transparent cards into sleeves, upgrading the level of your crew, and adding new abilities to them, allowing you new and more effective actions to take each turn. Battle is done via what is termed the Broadside Cube Tower, where you'll roll cubes out of the cannon ports of a cardboard ship and onto the battlefield where cards and ship powers can improve your chances of victory. You're working towards achieving four of the laid out victory conditions to trigger the end game and final scoring to see who has amassed the most fame and fortune and can be crowned the Pirate King. The game also incorporates expansions in the form of sagas that act a bit like an ongoing campaign. As you play, you'll uncover new parts of a saga, new cards and new components will be added to the game. This allows the game and its underlying story to evolve as you play. You aren't restricted to any single arrangement of players, the changes happen organically as you play different matches with any group of players. Letters of Mark is the first true expansion to the game. It includes a new saga that contains encounters, mysteries, cards, and content to be discovered, but it also includes the Flags of Old World. The Flags of Old World is a non-saga set of content that adds two Empire boards to the game. New resources called Prime Cargoes, new ship upgrades, and new explorer cards for each player deck. The explorers are upgradable like crew members and assist in the discovery and collection of the prime cargoes. You and the other pirates will compete for letters of mark from the different old world civilizations. And once you obtain your letter, you'll gain powerful new ship abilities, but becoming invested in one nation can make you the target of others. There are several different ways to pledge to a life of piracy. Let's take a look at how you can start your journey. First up, you can get guaranteed access to the Pledge Manager for $5. Easy enough. Next, at $59, you can get the Letters of Mark, which gets you the Flags of the Old World system, Saga 3 Changing Tides, the Upgrade Kit for the first Kickstarter backers, and the Sea Dogs from the Letters of Mark campaign. At $79, you get the Deckhand Pledge, granting you the Dead Reckoning base game and the Sea Dogs from the Letters of Mark campaign. Last, with a big leap to $239, you can get the Captains of the High Sea Pledge, giving you the base game, Sagas 1 through 3, the Flags of the Old World system, the original Sea Dogs, and the Sea Dogs from the Letters of Mark campaign. You can fill out your treasure chest with the wide selection of add ons they have on offer. In the add ons section, Saga 1 Deep Legends will run you $45. Saga 2 Salt and Thunder is another $45. Saga 3 Letters of Mark is $59. The Sea Dogs Pack 1 from the original campaign will run you $25. Custom sleeves for your game will cost you $15. Upgraded and painted cargo is $30. A set of metal coins will run you $40. Neoprene mat will cost $20. And upgraded buildings will run you another $30. Shipping for the various pledge levels seems to be at reasonable set prices but adding add-ons will increase your shipping in the Pledge Manager. VAT and sales tax will be charged in the Pledge Manager as well. They're hoping to be shipping rewards to backers a year from now in August of 2023. So what are my thoughts on this one? Well, the game looks like it has enough meat to keep most people engaged and interested. I like the broadside battle system, but I think at a certain point, if combat is too prevalent, it could become a novelty and even with the mitigation, might leave too much luck for some people's taste. I love the exploration aspects of the game. Inherently, each time you sit down for a session, it's going to be a bit of a new experience. 
It's hard to judge what the sagas add to the game without getting into spoiler territory. I love systems like this that have a way of making your own copy of the game semi-unique, based off performance, decisions, and sometimes luck. It's interesting to see how the game evolves over time and what new systems and avenues are opened up to players. I also like that they've created a platform that can be easily expanded upon. Personally, I shy away from it just a bit due to the fact that the game itself is competitive in nature. You can play traders or privateers and never really fight amongst yourselves, but at the end of the day, there's a winner and a loser. Competitive games have a place in my house, but not as large of a place as cooperative, and they really only see table time when there's company over or on a game night. Value-wise, I will say that the price for the base game seems to be pretty spot on. The individual sagas seem a bit steep, though. This may be because you really can't see all the content included, but for what you are getting, some cards and small components, $45 is a bit steep for an expansion. Then, looking at the $59 price tag on the Letters of Mark, that's almost as much as the base game. Maybe just a tad high, but maybe it's also a sign of the times. In the end, the sagas likely add quite a bit of replay and playtime to your core box. The question really is, will you play the game enough to see all that content? The game lasts around two hours. If you add another victory condition as is suggested with the letters of Mark, then that likely goes up at least another 30 minutes. How many times will you table this for two and a half hours a sitting? If it's something you're looking for and you think you'll play often, then it's likely an okay deal for you. If you don't see yourself playing it all that often, or you're unsure, I would think about grabbing just the core box. Experience that and then add to it if needed. The add-ons are hit and miss. The neoprene mat is well-priced and very tempting. The metal coins, on the other hand, are not. $40 for coins is steep and it would be an automatic pass for me. The upgraded resources and buildings look like something that I could print on my 3D printer, paint, and save myself quite a bit of money. The sleeves look to be almost a necessity for me. I like sleeving games. These have custom backs. It comes with sleeves for every card in the game. And honestly, it's no fuss. I don't have to figure out what size they are and order them myself. It's a win. One last note that rubs me the wrong way just a little bit here is the $5 access to the pledge manager. This has been done before, but I don't know if I've ever seen it marked as non-refundable. They get a list of emails for the $5 backers, just the same as they get a list of the emails for all of the backers. Those are put in a spreadsheet and fed into the pledge manager with everyone else. I don't think a $5 non-refundable fee is necessary here. It's going to make those $1 backers think twice about even throwing the minimum pledge out there. And in a world where pledge managers sometimes bring in more than the initial campaign, I wouldn't want to alienate those backers or place any undue pressure on them. Overall, if the game excites you and sounds like something you'd play, I'd say go for it. Just back with your head. If it's something you want to try out, back the core. If it's something you know you'll play all the time, go nuts! Well, this was a quick one, because there are plenty of great reviews out there for the game that can explain it and review it better than I can glancing at a rulebook. Hopefully some of you will find this interesting and useful. It's a game that I missed the first time around and almost skipped over this campaign before taking a better look. If you like pirate games, it's at least worth a closer look. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. We're trying to grow the channel and reach a wider audience, and we'd love to have you as part of our community. Thanks to all those watching and commenting. Let me know what you think of Dead Reckoning in the comments. Have a great weekend, and most importantly, play something fun.